Disney Princesses How characters from a mega media franchise have had an impact on the film industry and film culture for over 80 years. In a series of videos, I'm going to explore the revolutions that Disney Princess films have made in film, technology, art and the wider world. Disney Princesses have been around for over 80 years since the release of Walt Disney's first feature length animated film Snow White. But the Disney Princess lineup is a relatively new concept starting out in the 90s with videos, albums, magazines and became its own franchise in the year 2000, creating one of the most lucrative children's franchises in the world. For a long time, their image of holding up their ideals of beauty, singing and cute animal sidekicks was their main focus. But there is a lot more to these icons than pretty ball gowns and hairstyles. Each Disney princess has her own story to tell, each one hailing from a film which has left its own mark on film culture and technology and with fans all over the world and of all ages. In this video, we'll be opening with the one who started it all, Snow White. Without the success of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, we would not have Disney princesses, indeed Disney films at all, and the history of animation could have been very different. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all, is the infamous line from the story's antagonist, the Wicked Queen. The fairest one of all without doubt, as critics still commend Snow White today. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs is one of the most famous fairy tales in the world, first released in 1812, originally in German in the collection Kinder und Hausmärchen, Children's and Household Tales. The Grimm brothers Jacob and Wilhelm published their collection of tales, gathered from old European folk stories. Like many of the Grimm tales, it is believed that Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs has been in existence since the Middle Ages, passed down through word of mouth over the centuries. I won't retell the story of Snow White here, but if you do want to read the original fairy tale, you will be able to read it free online by following the link in the description. One of the most popular moral interpretations of the original fairy tale was that beauty and innocence were valuable in a woman, and to chase after intelligence and cunning, as the Queen did, is to be dangerous, and such a commodity could be perilous. Those young girls who read or heard the fairy tale like many of its time would be encouraged to conform to more traditional gender roles, which was encouraged up until the 20th century. Walt Disney was just 15 years old when he came up with the idea to bring Snow White to the big screen. In early 1917, a silent film version of Snow White starring Marguerite Clark was being shown in his hometown, Kansas, on a large four-screen projection. Disney was inspired by the perfect storytelling, and because of this inspiration, he was to make the story the first animated feature film for the studio. It was 1934, in the midst of the Great Depression, and Walt Disney had a problem. The studio's silly symphonies were winning all the Academy Awards for short subjects and cartoons, but it was a hand-to-mouth business with low returns. As today, the big money was in feature films, not animated shorts. Disney would always find a challenge and try to overcome it. He took risks. His next innovation was the first animation synced with sound in 1929, Steamboat Willie. But when Walt embarked on his journey to make the first full-length animated feature film in US history, he could not have known that Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs would be talked about as Disney's folly. His wife Lillian was one of those who said no one would want to see a full-length cartoon that would last at least an hour. Despite the naysayers, Disney went with his gut and brought together his best animators to create the film. Disney pitched the idea, telling the whole story through acting, miming and facial features, but they weren't really convinced. It all sounded very well and good, but how on earth would it be achievable? Disney instinctively knew that the film would have to grow, not only in length, but also in depth. In 1934, Walt Disney Productions released The Goddess of Spring, a silly symphony short. The technologies used in Goddess were further developed in the production of Snow White. Goddess was shot in a technicolor process. Number four, if you want to get really specific. Goddess was also the studio's first attempt at depicting realistic human characters. Well, 
I say it was an attempt. Walt employed a staggering 750 artists, most of whom were newspaper cartoonists with no formal artistic training. Together, these artists produced nearly 2 million images, of which, depending on sources, around 10% of the total are seen in the finished film. Snow White was a revolution in filmmaking, the first to use the multiplane camera. In fact, it was invented for this film. The multiplane camera is a device capable of shooting several images at once in order to create more depth and imagination in the artist's drawings. The film was shot in 24 frames per second, with each frame giving the illusion of depth by placing three to seven layers of drawings, called cells, one behind another and moving them separately. Multiplane cameras continue to be the standard in animation until the very recent use of computers, which achieve a similar but more detailed effect. After three quite intensive years, the film was completed in 1937. Initially, the project was budgeted at $250,000, which Disney hoped was low enough for him to make his money back, even if the film was not a hit. However, production costs quickly ballooned to $1.5 million, which in the 1930s was a huge sum of money. Walt was forced to mortgage his home to pay for production. Some critics were convinced the film would fail before its release. But Walt didn't need to fear, for when Snow White was released, audiences were moved to tears. Sergei Eisenstein, the Russian director who invented avant-garde cinema, called it the greatest film ever made. It was so much of a success that Walt was able to build the Disney Studios in Burbank from the profits. In 1939, Walt Disney received a special Academy Award for the film. The award came with seven smaller ones for each of the seven dwarfs. Fifty years later, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was the first animated feature to be recognised for being culturally, historically and aesthetically significant. In this video and in later ones, I will also look at how the design of the princess was influenced by the era in which she was designed. Early concept art depicted Snow White as a blonde, the blonde bombshell being a popular style in the 1930s. However, it was her raven hair that became one of her defining physical characteristics. Snow's hair may make her seem childlike, but her hairstyle was very popular in the 30s. The major trends for hairstyles were all about waves. With a softer look than the sleek bob and tight ringlets of the 20s, women began wearing their hair in more feminine styles. The wavy hairstyle of the 1930s live on today, although many women wear their hair in less defined waves compared to decades past. Snow White also had a little help becoming the fairest of them all. The women in the ink and paint department applied real makeup to the cells. The blush gave Snow White a lifelike appearance and her famously rosy cheeks. Snow White's iconic yellow and blue dress, sometimes adorned with red cape, was partly inspired by fashion of the 30s, with puff sleeves being one of them. However, puff sleeves were also fashionable early in the 16th century, which is when most agree was the era Snow White was based in. Only a few Disney characters have been honoured on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, Snow White being one of them with a star of her own. She was the third fictional character to receive one in 1987, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the film. Snow White's Prince was the first realistic human male that the Disney animators attempted to bring to life. It was found that the Prince was the hardest of all characters to animate. For this reason, his role in the film was minor. But there are sketches and storyboards surviving of scenes where the prince was trapped by the queen and trying to escape. Have you ever wondered if you had heard Snow White's iconic voice anywhere else? Chances are slim that you haven't. Snow White was voiced by Adriana Casalotti, who is said to have signed into a strict contract with Disney, never to use her unique voice in any future film. The character Snow White is a popular meet and greet character in the parks. She can be found in Epcot, in the Germany Pavilion of the World Showcase, Disneyland Paris, and the cruise ships, just to name a few. In conclusion, Snow White is a timeless classic princess, though who may not hold up to modern feminist standards today, still holds her own by showing us her true qualities. She is shown to be patient and hardworking, even in times of uncertainty. She does not fight her stepmother for her rights as a princess, but she does show kindness is a true superpower as she looks after others, keeps a positive mindset and hopes for the future. 
even if all she does is sit and wait for her prince to come and rescue her. She rocks those baking skills, is kind to nature, and is shown to be a wonderful friend, which is nothing to be ashamed of. Next time, I'll be delving into Disney's next princess film, Cinderella. Is Snow White your favourite Disney princess? Was there anything new that you learned about her film? If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, and check out what other Disney projects I have on my channel. Thank you for watching.